Next application, please. Thank you. The next application is NSC Duck Pond LLC at 63 Duck Pond Lane. And it's a workout for you, Curtis. <laughs> oh, is there any coffee in that cup? Okay. Oh, these are all trash. Okay. Oh, what you're handing is the notice of posting a mailing? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. My name is Barry Bashker. I'm the architect uh, for 63 Duck Pond Lane. Uh, I believe you have a package that has uh, a lot of renderings. Uh, I, I actually have done a couple more since then. Uh, can we start? Are there any questions? Why don't you start by presenting okay. your, what you're proposing? Okay, it's a wood shingle house. Uh, I believe it's very appropriate for Southampton. Uh, we have a wood shingle roof. Mm -hmm. I understand I that we also- You have to move that over. I don't think uh, Charlie can ca capture the entire rendering. You're yes. Yes. And also probably bring the entire board over this way. Move this portion here where you're, yes, look out that way. Not that way. Perfect, thank you. Okay, we also have a, uh, a lead coat of copper roof on our porch, but I've heard Ooh. the comments. Uh, I believe this might be a little bit different in that it's uh, just uh, the front portion of the roof. It's curved, very hard to do in shingled. Uh, it, it's not, an intricate part of the design. It's something to, uh, we're tying in with also, we have lead, co lead coated copper gutters and leaders all around the house. So it ties that in. Also, we're using a shingle, that's a Maybeck shingle, so it's gonna keep, it it's, uh, has a semi-transparent stain, leaching oil, so it's gonna keep its light gray color for 10 to 15 years rather than uh, turning darker, uh, as quickly as a normal shingle. So it's gonna blend the two grays together. But uh, I understand what you've said before and well, we're open for discussion. Well, isn't on Woolley Street. No, you it's should not. have started yes. out with, but that's yes. okay. This is Duck it's on Duck Pond Lane. Right, this is the other one for me. All right, um, what's the height of the building? The height of the building, it's on the architectural drawings. Uh, 36 feet? It's okay. 35 feet, according to the plan. Okay. But there is a mismarking, I think, of absolute elevations on some of your plans. It indicates it's 37 feet, or roughly 37 feet. If you do the math between an average grade of 19.7 uh, and a... Well, that might have been the existing. We're, we're raising... I, I spoke with the building inspector. We're raising the grade over the entire middle of the property by, by about two feet. Okay. And we're going to be from the average grade of the proposed grade yeah. because it's a very, very low pitch on the entire property, and you're always going to have standing water on the uh, empty house. And so, but in any case, it, uh, I believe I indicate what the proposed. I see it. Yeah. Nineteen point seven. Yeah, that's out. Existing is sixteen point. 30? <coughs> Three five. Yeah. Three five. I don't know. I have good glasses, but not that good. On a architect's rule, it was just under thirty. <coughs> it's about thirty-four and a half feet tall from the grade to uh, the original. <coughs> they say thirty-five on the plans from grade to the can, but it looked like it was just under. So ultimately, you have a three-story building. Uh, it's not a three-story building because there's no, it's an unfinished attic. Uh, this is, this little, uh, I discussed this with the building inspector. Uh, we have an unfinished attic, but we do have this little, uh, this little deck. It's only a few feet deep. It's only if somebody wants to stand out and take and look at the, uh, From the attic? The ocean. Yeah, from the attic. It's unfinished. 
you have a deck coming from an unfinished attic. It's like a little yeah, it's, it's like a little bounce. It's, uh, it's almost like a little dormer. It really, it, it's, it, you, no one can really, you can put even a chair there, it's so small. Uh, if you look at it here, you can get a better view of it. It uh, barely has three or four feet in front of the door, so it's, it's more of an aesthetic uh, uh, element, and it's not going to be a deck that someone's going to go out and actually sit down and, and, and eat or use it for anything other than just standing on it to look and go back in. It would allow a view of the ocean, I assume. Yes. That's part of the point. Right, and it is shielded on both sides by the, uh, the cross gables, so if anyone was standing on there, they would not be able to be seen by anybody from the other property, so That's there is privacy. Point. Thank you. Okay. But <coughs> excuse me. Oh, okay. And there goes the uh, solar panels. Where? On the flat roof. Oh, yeah. I guess that's just. A uh, we have it on the side of the garage, yeah, the, which good. is shielded, yeah. and we have okay. it just on that one little uh, six-foot area that's flat. I kept the the main part of the building is a little bit taller to sort of accentuate the middle. And right along here, there's a very small section where we can just get a few more panels. It's right here, just like a six foot deep area. Um, okay. Jeff, comments? Um, actually, uh, Rob and I were reviewing this together today, so uh, Rob had some comments on the fenestration, so I, I uh, relinquish the, uh, my time to Rob. Rob, comments? Um, well, thanks, Jeff. Uh, you know, um, I'd like the design, generally. Um, I think it has some nice elements. Uh, the two dormers uh, on the th third floor, is essentially the third floor, uh, seemed a little heavy, and particularly the one in Did front. But direction? Are we yes, talking sorry. about the front elevation? So on the front elevation. Uh, but the, the, the real concern was maybe just the round windows in the gable ends. And I'm wondering if there was any thought of, well, I'd say it this way, that it, that the, the three of them repeating on each of the gables, even though one of the gables differs from the other, felt a little like gilding the lily uh, to me. It, it made it, it had the effect of making it look busy. Because um, huh? you've got the you've got the three circular ones on the second floor, and you have the two oval ones by the front door. I, I like the formality. I think otherwise it's uh, a fairly simple design. If a house this size can be simple. But I wondered if there was any thought about uh, or might be a comfort of removing the, the one that's on the garage gable end. Uh, or uh, is <coughs> if there was a choice in a perfect world, I would rather lose the two ovals and make those rectangular on the first floor and, and keep the three just because it ties everything together if, if you do it. Similarly, everywhere. Okay. Uh, uh, if, obviously, if it was a matter of getting approved or not getting approved, uh, we can always just eliminate the window and think of something at some point in the future. But I, I think that it's, uh, you know, if you, if you look at this, the rendering, you can see it's not as obtrusive as you may think when you mm -hmm. look at it. They're a pretty insignificant element, I think, gives it that nautical feel. Well, in elevation, the, the oval windows show up more, of course, under a shadow line or on, under a porch, they're not going to show up as much. So it was really the round windows that it just felt to me like it was possibly okay. slightly overdone. I, I'm not making a huge thing of it. But the, um, the, the windows themselves are pretty small for the size of the rooms. I, I was keeping... Yeah. I was also implemented in the pool house, and it's, it's repeated it's throughout. Everywhere. Repeated yeah, repeated on the, repeat on the east, back, set, on the pool west, house. Side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty it's consistent. Too. It's consistent, but it, that's... I don't think that makes it better. For purposes of, is it more decorative, is it bring more light in? No, it actually brings more light in because we have, we actually vaulted all the ceilings in the rooms that you see that circular window, okay. and it's right at the top, and it brings light into the middle of the rooms. Otherwise, those size rooms would be pretty dark with the amount of windows that we have. Um, I have a question, and maybe out of it's not really about the about the design. I think you did a pretty decent job considering the size of the house. I've seen a lot, of, a lot more. Um, you know, when you have such a huge canvas, people tend to get extremely busy and throw any, every piece of architectural design <laughs> at it until something sticks. My question to you is: This is a 
a, uh, a, a, a um, architectural program that created this uh, visual. This is not an actual photo of a home. Which which one are you talking about? Um, the okay, I see one. This one. Yeah. This was this, uh, some of the renderings were done by uh, a renderer that we use on a lot of uh, our projects. And this one, this quality a, was done by this. This, this. this one is a photo montage. Okay. When I do my renderings in my office, personally, I take photo, photographs of other houses and I use those elements and I make a photo quality rendering. I could. I feel, it looks like a photo. I just, just for purposes of, you know, Great. future applications, and you can get maybe give some. Uh, instruction to other architects that come before us because it actually, really gave us a photo quality design. Actually, if you look at, on, I believe, on ARB3, the rendering sheet, this is another one that I had done myself personally, and that's also more photorealistic than the other renderings. Mm -hmm. Incredible. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have any questions about the, uh, it's because I think uh, we were able to actually get a photo quality design and get texture. Mm -hmm. It helps to, to yes. really see, especially, I know some of the questions and issues you had with the, uh, the windows. Yeah. It softens because you start to see the real um, uh, effect. How about the chimneys? Yeah. Are they inordinately tall? Uh, well, because they're on <coughs> the back of the house, you know, they're a little bit taller than they probably needed to be functionally by code so that you so that you can actually see it as you're approaching the house. Otherwise they would be completely hidden. And I thought it would be uh, it's an actual part of the architecture of the house. Uh, if there is an issue about the height, there's no problem by code to to bring it down lower. <coughs> and I was more concerned with the, the caps on the caps. Oh the uh, the uh, stainless the stainless steel yeah. or the or probably anodized copper to match uh, chimney caps. Uh, you know, we could we could do a black or we could do terracotta. Uh, you know, but I, I sort of like the way it ties or, in or you with can everything. Mix else. them? I'm sorry. <laughs> where you can no, eliminate yeah, them entirely? I don't get it. Uh, it's well, just so many elements. You know, the round window, the tall chimneys. It just seems really busy to me. Well, uh, you know, actually, uh, uh, what I was trying to do is you, you have a very big house, so you have to break up the planes. You have to introduce something, otherwise it just looks like a box. So there's a compromise between trying to give it some architectural element, uh, breaking it up, and trying and being busy. I thought that it had the right balance of not being busy. Every, all the elements were simple; they were repeated, and uh, and certainly from the front, I kept the window fenestrations small, trying to so, try to downgrade the, the scale of the house. Just just for pur purposes of uh, um, understanding, the chimneys are going to be brick. Bottom portion of the house is going to be the stone. Uh, yes. It, well, the bottom portion of the house is going to be uh, the uh, 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 granite stone, but it's only going to be a foot and a half, and it'll be probably covered by by uh, plants. So you, you're probably not even going to see it. If you look at the rendering, it's a very, very small amount that you'll that you'll ever be able to see. Uh, the only place maybe you might see it is just at the front porch and. And the uh, the raised area by the garage, but uh, but remember, you'll never see the two of them in the same plane. Well, the other one is the hut. It's in the back of the house and it extends up beyond the ridge. It's just when you look at that, yeah. I don't, I don't like it. Yeah. You look at that. It's nothing. Really, it's not nothing. I don't know. I'm having trouble with this okay. application. Honestly. All right, I'm done. You done? So, the round windows and the chimneys. Well, like I said, uh, we're not opposed to lowering the height of the chimneys, maybe doing a, a gray brick to match the, the no, stone. I, I don't care about that. I just think there are, a lot of, the... there are a lot of external elements going across the top of this large house. The dormers, it's just... A lot of, how many round windows? One, two, three, there are like eight of them or 10? Well, well, that's around the entire length of uh, yeah. everywhere, but for one, just on the front, like I said, I would, would not be opposed to changing the, the windows on the, the rectangular. Is there any public comment on the application? To see if there was any further discussion outside. I, I don't, yeah. 
I, I don't know how to really fix it. That's it's not just it's unsettling to me how many elements there are. Christina, anything further? No. Robbie, anything further? You know, if you tell me which elements there are, I could address any of them for you. Can, can I just ask a question on this, um, this, these little knee walls here? The intent there is to create what visually? Uh, I uh, thought when initially, because this is a new rendering in my, I, I'm just seeing this for the first time, but I thought these were sort of built-in seats maybe. No, um, but, no, it's, okay. it's, it's just meant to, to uh, that's the mudroom entrance, yep. so you can come in straight to the mudroom and then go to the kitchen from over there. Uh, I just wanted to soften that entrance, didn't want it to just be a recess, okay. uh, you know, just make more traditional. Mm -hmm. uh, the only other thing, I assume that, and I, I think I've lined this up, but like these windows here, the stacked two, two and two windows right here are the staircase. Is that Yes, right. that is the staircase and you can see it here. Uh, as you're going up the stairs, there'll be th those corresponds exactly to the land, each of the landings. So as you're walking up that staircase, you'll be able to have a nice view of the backyard. Oh, that's that's the rear. Right? <laughs> that's the rear of the house. And the entire and the any entire part of it is white panel. To the uh, sign of world. Any uh, objection to some of the comments about the business of the chimneys? I agree the chimneys are a little busy and tall. I'm sympathetic to highlighting them as architectural elements that are set back, therefore they need to be taller. If there are a way to make those chimney caps shorter, I'd be interested to know well, that. We, we, can, we can eliminate the decorative chimney caps and just have the standard one foot high, which caps which we wouldn't see from the front, so the element would be gone. And I could lower the chimneys by three feet and still, still it be an, an element, and if I and if it was important, I could also have it a, 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 a gray range brick to match the colors in the foundation. So all you're those saying things you're going to remove the decorative sort of right. There'll be your standard stainless steel and caps. There. I don't think anyone line. cared about the brick yeah. in comparison okay. to the stone. I prefer okay. brick over stone. Okay. Again, with but you reduce if you were able to re bring the roof down. If you're able to get rid of the decorative caps. Right. I wouldn't say bring the masonry and the brick down necessarily. I think the height is appropriate so that it can be seen for that purpose. So just removal of the deck. Oh, that's the deck that, that's that's very easy to do. That's not a problem. No one was this is first time seeing that. an application. Um, not that I'm, we're a board of expediting, as uh, stated by our council, but um, it seems that there's one small element that's uh, uh, that the board is requesting to be changed. Uh, would they feel comfortable having the architect? Uh, mark, cross it out, mark it to refer it, or would they reference it that it be removed or another set of plans? Um, Jeff? Oh, I'm fine. If you're going to remove the caps, that's an <laughs> easy. Uh, that's okay. Uh, Susan? I don't think I should comment. Okay. Christina? I'm not say yes, so I can change it here. Okay. Um, Rob, I'd be willing to accept All the right, change. So if you'll take the plans. Just and make the necessary changes for the chimney. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Can I do that right now? Or? Yes, please. Yes. Are there any additional public comments? Okay. Two copies in the file, everything else. Uh, motion to approve. I make a motion that we approve the application of MSC Duckpond Lane at 63 Duckpond Lane. Subject to the removal of the top. Subject to the chimney changes. As noted. As noted. Uh, the motion is by Christina. Is there a second? <coughs> I'll second. Okay. 
by uh, Rob. All the favor, Rob. Aye. Christina. Aye. Susan. Aye. Jeff. Aye. And I'm an I as well. Aye. Make the re uh, record reflect that Susan is an Sorry, no voice. <laughs> You want to take, you know, how about this? You take everything, you bring it back. <laughs> okay, that's what I was thinking originally. <laughs> you got momentum going. Do you want these extra sets, sir? Because we have two for the file already. Well, if it would be a waste of paper if well, you just kept it, yeah. We have two. No, we we have to make a mess. Right. Element placement. Just a table in the hall all the way to the So should I call okay. the next one? Thank you, sir. It. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Call to the next I'm my own desk. <laughs> John P. Flag, 296 Little Plains Road. I need to look for the affidavit. No, they're coming in right now. I'm just looking for the affidavit. It was really hard to figure out. Thank you. Your name for the record, sir? I'm Jeff Santonastasi. Okay. You have no plans with you? No. Okay. You want to propose, make a presentation? Uh, yeah. At this house, the uh, owner is looking to maintain exactly what's there, but just improve it, uh, update it. So he's looking to um, lift the house, put a new foundation. Sorry? He's looking to lift the house, okay. put a new foundation for more habitable space and storage, and increase the size of two bedrooms in the house. One is right now like a very small maid's room on the first floor, which we'd like to increase, as well as give it a full bath. What's, what's very difficult is that we don't have any direction on what area, what portion of the house is being expanded. We have to make record. So we put for the record, we need you to give us direction. Each side of the house is being expanded. Okay, show us direction exactly what's being done. Okay. All right, so can you propose, uh, help us out? With so that? on the north side of the house, right. on the north um, east side of the house is a small. Okay. How about we make, one, make this very easy. I'm going to hand you this file. Okay. And what Charlie's going to do is he's going to film it from the top. You're going to show us and point out what's being done. Sure. Okay. So, this is existing. At the moment, this bedroom here in this corner is rather small. There's no, <coughs> it's not an ensuite. So, the proposal is to create the existing full bath, making it a powder room by removing the shower from that. And the addition would be going out further towards the north. Okay. Can you show us any elevations where they exist? Just show us the outside. Sure. North side elevation. Okay. That's existing. Right. No. Existing. So that's what it looks like. And then. Let me see. Here is the proposed. Okay, so it's a two-story addition? One-story addition. One-story addition, which you're creating a second-story deck. Well, the second-story deck is existing at the moment. Okay. So that is um, staying there. You're increasing the volume of the second-story deck? Increasing the, um, it's actually gonna help out. 
see something here. I don't have an answer for that. The architect didn't draw on the additional deck, but we weren't planning on making the upper deck larger, actually. There was an elevation that seemed to indicate the railing got wider along with the first floor addition. Um, if you, I don't, unfortunately, there's not enough sets to go around. When I looked at the file earlier, it looked as though the railing had been moved out to the edge of the new addition, which would, in fact, Increase, increase the, the size. This size. Mm -hmm. Yes. But that's not what it showed on plan, I don't believe. And there's Correct. also an issue on some windows that show up on the north elevation behind the deck railing there that I didn't see on the plans. So we may need to go through this step by step a little bit. It's a, not the clearest file, at least on a first read by me. Uh, I found it incredibly confusing. But, which is the reason why I was trying to have him outline it first. Thank you. It still is confusing. That's okay. all I'm saying. Um, I, I, the, the challenge we have is we're trying to look at the application all individually. I had challenges. Now, having you presented, I think we all still have the same challenges. Um, is the architect here? No. Okay. Um, I tell you what would be helpful, Small. just as a part of, um, if you can have the architect prepare Existing, propose. In the same. And compare them. So that we can actually see Simply. what's being proposed. Small plans. Okay, so. so what we got next? Huh? <laughs> part, part, part two is it's difficult for us to see these plans individually up here. We ask that the plans be reduced, smaller plans, so each one of us could look at that while you're giving your presentation. It helps us work with you through the application. I wasn't told of that need, okay. The, yeah, they yeah. should have, because that's part, supposed to be a part of the checklist now. Okay. Reduced plans, just for, for our visual. So, a comparison between proposed uh, um, and, and, and existing, that gives us a uh, dimension on what's being done, as well as smaller elevations, or smaller plans, so we can look at them individually while we're working with you, and just go through exactly what you are doing in terms of what's being, uh, what's being uh, increased. Not so much inter uh, internal. Uh, we use internal just as a reference as to why you're increasing it, mm -hmm. but we're an external board. We're, our re responsibility is the impact more than it is the reason. Okay. Any qu other questions, board? No, that would be so helpful. Okay. Uh, yeah, because this is going to be difficult. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I would also suggest that you have the architect pre present this because there may be questions we have of him or her that you may not be able to answer. Okay. That, that makes sense. Right. Is there any public comment on the application? All right. So you're, um, with those suggestions, you're going to go back to the architect. And you're right now asking for an adjournment so you can prepare yourself at the next meeting. Okay. Motion to approve applicant's request to adjourn until our next meeting. I make a motion we approve the applicant's request to adjourn to our next meeting. Motion by Christina. Is there a second? I second the motion. Second by Susan. All in favor. Rob? Aye. Christina? Aye. Susan? Aye. Jeff? Aye. And I too. Thank you. <clears throat> There's only one plan here. No, there are two. Next application. Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you. Did we make a motion on this? Yes. <coughs> next application, please. Yes. The next application is for Lisa Bass, <coughs> property located at Peltro Street. This is addition of a second story doormat on the rear of the property. Okay. Third floor doormat. Third. third floor, I'm sorry. Apologize, third floor doormat. Good evening, Robert Fischetti, attorney for the applicant, Lisa Bass. Lisa is joining us here tonight. Uh, 
so the application tonight is for 20 Pelotro Street. Uh, it's on the south side of Pelotro Street. Um, it's, a, it's a small sort of postage stamp lot, 5,123 5, square feet of a lot in the uh, R7.5 zoning district. It's improved by a single family residence, been there for uh, since about 1902, according to the building department. Um, Zach, have you looked at this? What? Okay. Uh, um, this should have triggered Zach's review. It's, um, you have not done a report or a review of this? It's not. What's the age of the house? 1934. The age of the house is 1934? What's he saying? Oh, 1902? Was, okay. That's entirely Not the different. historic district. That's, if, it's a, if it's a home that's aged. Oh, is it pre-20? It doesn't look. That's why I'm asking. Pre-1920. Pre so but what's the age of the house? Uh, 1934. Thank you. What was it? Uh, 1934. But could, did you just say? It was my error. My client has been uh, in closer contact with the building department about all this. I think it was just a, a misnote on my part. And the building department told her that it was 1934? Yes. Okay. Uh, so there's some photos that have been submitted of the uh, existing house. Um, and I just want to note uh, that, so my clients recently purchased the house. And uh, as I said, it's a very small house. They're trying to uh, just make a little bit of room for themselves. Um, and as part of that, they have this third floor dormer. It's really two and a half story dormer that's uh, before you today. And then as sort of a full disclosure, the uh, due to some surveying delays, there are also some small modifications to the front porch and the rear porch that are proposed at your July 9th meeting separate from this. That was uh, the advice of the building department was to separate them. Obviously, the, chain, the difference of a month is an important construction timing for them. So if we can have the. Could I ask you, because I went over there to look at it, mm -hmm. and there was construction taking place yes, already. Yes, there is a building permit, uh, an active building permit for interior work. Uh, there are also were two uh, windows, windows that were removed because of termite damage. So if you notice, those windows are right near a flat roof. All the water had, uh, or not, not necessarily totally flat, but poorly pitched roof. The water sloped into those windows. They had to be removed. The next phase of the application, those will remain temporarily closed up. The next phase is proposing to remove those windows. Uh, they fade. They're so the, so the application, you know, I'm having some issues with. It's two parts. Today we're dealing with the third yeah, story. You, you're, but you're also already doing work, which has. That's an interior building permit that's separate. But from, now some windows have been closed off? No, the windows are being worked on. There's, there was termite damage that is being I removed and remediated. So that Nothing has been changed with the windows. So there. you're replacing <coughs> them as they were? I'm sorry? They will be replaced? Well, no, as I said, the, the next phase of this, which is coming in front of you next month, is proposing to close those windows up for privacy purposes. The next house right next door is very close. The uh, windows lead to the bathrooms. They feel <coughs> it's appropriate to have those those closed off, they're on the side of the house. Doesn't what? Matter. This is what caused. To me, then you're doing work on the outside of the house. No? You are, you are doing work on the outside of the house, yes, because of the windows. Nothing has been added to the outside of the house. Those are repaired. Well, something's been removed, yes? No, it's being repaired. There's termite damage for repair. Then you just told me that your, those will be changed, is that correct? Not, nothing will happen with those windows until we come before you next month to talk about those windows and propose something to you. Just for the record, the windows there, are, they in, are there windows there now? Yes. Okay. Um, work that's being done is internal. Is there any external work being done right now? No. Nothing. Nothing, nothing. right? Well, just those windows just the, were removed. The windows are removed. To, to, right? So the windows have been removed? Yes. Okay, so the windows have been removed. They're inside and, the house. They're inside well, the house. What's covering the hole where the windows are? The tie back and, and water materials. Just covered it up. Water okay. Temporary materials, yeah. too. Yeah. And then you will be coming back before us in July to yes. propose what that will be. Yes, Absolutely. already been submitted for okay. July. Because there was some damage, water damage there. Tremendous amount of damage. Right. Which we would, though we don't want to wait till July until the, we repair at least water coming right. into the house. They had to at least yeah, stop, the, stop the damage. Okay. Okay. Then well, so nothing's going to be done. Mm -hmm. I know you're concerned about the removal, but there's water pouring in the house. <coughs> the purposes of that, the building department allowed them to remove it to stop the water from coming in. 
and then they're coming back before us to propose what that will be. Does the building uh, permit say that you could remove the windows? I, I just want to get it squared away about, because now we have, I went to the house, some work had been done on the exterior of the house that I saw, which was windows were covered up or removed. I went to look at the shed, where the shed dormer was going to be, and I encountered this. Mm -hmm. Then, on the plans, it says that they are going to make other changes on porches, is that correct? Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's so piecemeal and that I don't really have a sense of the entire renovation of this house, the exterior renovation of the house that I find confusing. And I don't want to be part of something that isn't okay. legit. Okay, um, so, so when there's, when there's um, damage, um, um, the, the, and I'm, I'm going to yield to counsel with regards to the legal action to remedy, especially specifically water damage, but um, right now it's to at least stop any further damage to be done. Um, but instead of just replacing it, they're keeping it yield or hold, hold until we can come back before us to review it. And then we will agree to or disagree with whatever presentation to replace um, what currently exists. But they don't intend. Did you get a demo permit? Was there a demo permit uh, required or anything? How much demolition no. there was? It was just. Demo permit required. Yeah. The premise right now is that they'd have to replace the windows with rebuilt windows or That's like not kind what windows. Going to do. But but. They would have anything, to come right before now. us to not do that. If they if they come before us and we don't approve it or they don't come before us, they would have to replace the windows. Correct. Okay. Um, so would it help, Susan, to have like a listing of sort of the two or three or four elements that they hope to change overall and then making clear what's in this application right now before well, us? Well, I know what's in this application. Yeah. I was so surprised that there was yeah. exterior work done when yeah. I went there. Well, I, I think the, the larger... <laughs> In my interpretation of what Susan is, is addressing is that <clears throat> there's a, a very significant change to this house, to the roof line of this house. And albeit in the back, it is visual from the side. And if there are other changes to be made, I believe her concern, but it truly is mine, is that I'm missing the opportunity, because you're presenting it piecemeal, to see the overall impact of the various things you're going to do. So in my mind, this file is incomplete until all the changes are presented. So I would not vote at this meeting to approve it, no matter what is presented, until your changes are presented in their entirety. And I th think that's perhaps where Susan is going. I think that's right. Yeah, I, I'm happy to opine on what's being proposed here. Right. But I view the file as incomplete, knowing that you are. I guess neither we other nor the things. department thought that changing two windows would have so much of an impact. I'm not, on talking, I'm not talking about the windows, actually. No, I'm talking about you, you're going to make subsequent proposals. I understand. And it, it, it those, wasn't our those ideal. elements impact the entire house. So <coughs> I'd like to have a vision of <coughs> all the things you're doing properly presented. And, have, and having a complete file. To that point, and in fairness to the applicant, the plans that are in there, although there's some mislabeling of south and north and some other things uh, that I would just ask you to go back and look at those details, um, but in, in terms of elevations. But the initial elevations that were submitted do show the proposed additional work. It just says that uh, right, the, the point, it, so it shows the porch. Uh, the work is there. For the front. Sorry. Um, but they couldn't get a surveyor to do a survey that showed that new foundation line <coughs> on a Is it represented way. on that model? Yes. The changes? That uh, the the cha front? No, just the, the dormer front. is on the model. Just trying to move on. Well, then, just the then I'm, I'm back to that. But the, the, the everything else is on the plans, though, on the plans that you've, been, that you've received. Okay. Um, I, take, take I think we're looking at the glass perhaps half empty when it's half full, which is if they've shown us, they've given us an outline of the initial set of plans, the full initial right. set of plans, of what they intend to do, knowing that they can't seek an approval for the porch right. tonight right. because they don't have a survey showing that. 
Um, and then there's this complication of the windows. Uh, uh, it's, an it's an important month difference to them. They're in temporary living no, situation I, I now. This is, not looking to hold you up. this is their primary just, residence. Just so the record reflects, the application is complete. What you're saying is that you don't have a complete review of right. the application. Right. So th I just want to make sure, make you. sure that you know the record yep. reflects. And it's complete. The applicant's done what he or she has done leg legally as sure. it's responsibility if you come before this board, you've done your proper mailing, you've done your proper posting, and you've yep. provided the proper documentation to come before this board to, to be reviewed. What they are saying is that because other work is being done, their review doesn't seem to be complete because they're trying to put apples and oranges together at different times. I so, understand. But shouldn't this uh, be looked at in, a, in, in, in its own application? I mean, this right. is a separate application so, from anything that comes before you in the future. We could withdraw the application in the future. We could change the application in the future. <laughs> this is here yeah, for this, is here for yep. this, this dorm. Yeah. Okay. okay. So and the risk is that someone doesn't like you. You get something approved, and someone doesn't like what you're approving later, and things change. That's but correct. that's your risk. That's your risk. To not have the full I mean, there's sort of independent okay. projects in this, yes. in a sense. I mean, yeah. So right. we are just reviewing the dorms. We're just looking yeah. at the dorm. No other, no other element, uh, elements. No other elements no, before you. Not the lead roof, metal roof. <laughs> no. 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 I'm, I'm just, I'm just making sure we know this because you have it here. So we want to make sure that this is no, I think they, the same proposed, but it's on the plan now. Yes, yes. Okay? Um, which is, in a sense, and I understand, I understand what you're saying, Susan. It's a little misleading when I have proposed and we're making an approval to something. One could make the assumption that everything is approved. I understand. We right. didn't want to, hop, you know, on the, on the other side of things, we didn't want to not disclose those things to you and then come back to Understood. you a month later. What I would want for the part of this application is a slip sheet on what's being done. Do you have something like that? No, Not just no, the the third story door. All right, let's let's create the file by you documenting what that what that is. Let's go through it. Okay, so uh, as you can see on the plans, the third story dormer uh, on the back of the house uh, spans from uh, the, the full scope of the back of the house. Uh, I think it's important to, uh, to consider that although this is called a third story, second two and a half story uh, that's been reviewed by Ten Hoso in the building department, it meets all of the qualifications for a half story. So it is, it is not a third story in, in any sort of a, a definition. Uh, it's, I think, also important to consider that this is an old house. This third story, this is to, to the peak of the roof here is 25 and a half feet. It's not, I mean, if you look at the uh, the house next door, which there is a photo of here, um, I mean, our our top, uh, <coughs> what you call the second and a half story, is uh, is not much higher, if at all, than the second story of, uh, of a newer home. Um, as you can also see, we've got the view from the back of this uh, house. Uh, the only thing you see is the neighbor's yard. The only thing you would see from the third story is also the neighbor's yard. Um, there's no, uh, no privacy issue as the, as the neighbor in the back is concerned. Fairly small addition, it's 400 square feet. We've heard <coughs> engineers submit. Uh, uh, Could, um, I thought there might be a privacy issue. These, your, the yard in the back is... You can see the yard in the back from from the second story too. There's no change in the view. I, this is the this is fine. a view from and, the second story. And when story. you get up higher, you can see all through those backs, into the <laughs> right. Is there a photograph of the back of the house as it is now in this back? Yes, right here. Where? It's in your packet that was handed out to you just now. <coughs> Should we mark back uh, second story of at Pelletier Street, 20 Pelletier. You see that? It's a very small backyard, so when you take a photo, unless you were to go into the neighbor's yard, right. you sort no, of end it, up at it a bit of a... It definitely is a small backyard. I got that. <coughs> it was cute, though, that little garden. There's a little bit of the back porch. Oh, there it is. Here it is. Yeah. Uh, and my, my client very it's skillfully it's put it's together out a model for you as well. So it's, it's about two-thirds of the way through this package. There it goes. <laughs> Okay. Um, we got a backyard neighbor. Back porch at 20. This is the south view. And the second story. Yes. Windows. There are three windows across. I, 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 I think what I'm having. I think what I'm having a challenge with is Here. the grouping of threes. They go to one. It, it, it just the groupings of windows. There's no symmetry at the rear. You have, it's grouping of threes. So you have three windows, you have three windows. Looking at the 
underneath you have the single. It, it just seems to be you're, as you're growing up, you're giving, you are giving, and I would say, and I agree with you, some maybe some privacy concerns or some privacy issues. It would be similar to putting a third-story deck. Mm -hmm. um, um, not that you're in, you know, but you're outside you of entertainment, at? I mean, but your a, line of sight would be a, a bit of a challenge. Um, I, I need to go back to the site. I have to, sorry, I, I really need to go back to the site on this one mm -hmm. um, because it does, to me, pose a little bit of a problem. I didn't see this model. I looked at this, and I tell you, I was quite confused um, as to the grouping of the windows and then the vertical. So it's vertical, is that paneling, paneling or is that... But what, what is the That's material on the third floor there that's being proposed? Is shingle? It's cedar shingle? Here? Okay. Yeah, she's saying cedar shingle. Are you sure? Well, <laughs> the applicant's proposing that to be case. But you can see as from the, the, the rendering okay. itself doesn't mm -hmm. reflect that. It reflects a, 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 so it's kind of throwing me off mm -hmm. um, personally. I don't know about the other boards. And, and then, again, the question was the metal roof. Wasn't it metal roof? I, I see now that it's an incomplete application. Well, I should say the other portion of it um, is not being proposed today. It's just the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the uh, dormer. But I I'm still having some visual issues on what that third story is going to really uh, Visual as in as far as the privacy of what you're looking at? I mean, you're, what I'm looking like I said, at, you're also the grouping of the windows being um, a little maybe busy on the third floor. You're, you're bringing, when you, as you're going up, you're bringing more attraction to it because now you have all of the windows there. And it's, it's visually, and you're looking up now, I think it actually appears to be a three-story building, yeah. more, more so now with all of that. Um, I think there's a better way to bring all the light in that you're looking for, and that's probably why you're doing it. I think there's a more creative way to do that than to group three windows, especially when you want to try to minimize that more than you want to accentuate it. Um, Rob, comments? So I assume that it's not, light may be a benefit of it, but that the primary purpose for this dormer is to create headroom for usable space for yes. a bedroom and a bathroom yes, upstairs. Exactly. There's my not much room to go anywhere else with this house and the and the property. Um, so, so they're trying to take advantage of, of what my they can. concerns. And I visited the site a couple weeks ago and ran into the applicant. We had a very nice conversation. She helped me understand uh, some of the sequencing that you're and the and the hold up with the surveyor. My concern is with the form of the dormer uh, that going fully side to side as it does on the house and fully to the back wall makes it look more like. Um, with a, with a not flat but nearly flat roof, it doesn't look like a traditional shed dormer. A traditional shed dormer might come in below the uh, ridge line, mm -hmm. and it might come in a little bit from the side walls or the back wall. So and this expanded looks, salt box looks mm -hmm. like a yeah. expanded salt box. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's my concern. I think that can be addressed with some. I mean, uh, with some detailing and and, and maybe some. Uh, Slight downsizing of it just to, to create some setbacks. Uh, to You're soften. talking about as far as, as the width from here, like yeah, and the depth to the fully to the back wall. And as someone said, those you know, unfortunately, those side walls are pretty visible as you go up either way up and down the street. You do see the side of this house, and I'm sensitive to the fact that, as you said, it's not as tall as some other houses. But unfortunately, in a way, that's irrelevant. Uh, I mean, not irrelevant. I understand, but. You know, a, a possible so I'm not recommending it. A possible solution here would be to raise the entire roof line and then create a shorter dormer, just the dormer you have now, but it would sit down further from the roof line and be subservient to it. Right now, you have so you a tend to bring this peak up. You're saying. You know, if if you if you're only at 25 feet and you can go higher than that, I'm just saying in theory that would right. be uh, uh, a way to do it. Now that would change the look of the front. Mm -hmm. But as it stands right now, that dormer fights that initial form and, and changes the look of the gables on the end in a way that uh, I, I need to get more comfortable with than I am now. Um, Christina? I have nothing else to say. Susan? I have nothing else to say also. Jeff? I, I think, Curtis, you, you helped me figure out what was <clears throat> bothering me on that, which is the, uh, in addition to what Rob was saying too, is that the th grouping of three windows repeated twice gives the sensation that it's a, a wall of windows. Um, now maybe it's taken down to two and two or something like that. And I think Rob's point is a good one as well, which is it's less like a shed dormer 
in terms of an expanded cape, as Curtis mentioned, than it is as looks as if you're raising the roof on the entire house. The suggestion to bring up a peak, you know, if you could wave a magic wand, that might be interesting. But on the other hand, you, that would entail changing the entire side facades, and that's an undertaking and a half on a house that's almost 100 years old. So I would not. But you're also now taking it to a three-story building. Right. Yeah. Uh, right. So I mean, so if you can rework work it so it looks more like a shed dormer and a little less like a window of walls, I think you're going to have a cute house. It is a cute house. It's <laughs> yeah, it's super cute. It really it is. is. Even that little not a lot of these backyard, around, unfortunately. So. And they're not looking to change that. This is this is a, a lot really function. It, it is in the room, you know, for a reason. There are just so you understand, and you have it on the plans. I mean, there are, are right now three tiny bedrooms upstairs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They have two children. They're just <coughs> making enough room for two. Mm -hmm. I think that end bedrooms end up being only like fifteen by ten, right? They're not. They don't end up with. Some we some just huge need to experience. accommodate our oldest son who is six four. So that was the <laughs> attic space. So it's a problem we need I've to never had. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the portion of the area where I'm yes. assuming used to be the garage. That uh, you, there, you couldn't do any. Uh, you couldn't add to an extension or second story to the portion where the, the was it pyramid issues. What are you talking about? Yes. Here. The yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. I would. I believe it's pretty close on the. They would Where you now probably run into the now you can actually create a, a, a bedroom suite. That is actually when we bought it. That is a bedroom suite. Yeah, right well, I'm saying going a second story now you create a. Well, this, second. Is, this is five feet from the the pyramid. Oh. The pyramid. Okay. Yeah, so this is five I, five feet from the property line here. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. we're talking yeah, tight. Time yeah, that. understood. So yeah. if the pitch were less than maybe ten percent. Charlie, are you picking all this up? Well, she should really be able to. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Um, if the and your pitch, name just so they have um, Lisa Bass, 20 Pelletro. Um, if the pitch of that dormer were to be less or at 10%, then the highest point of the house, is that going to be okay? Or is there a, a certain number that we need to adhere to? I don't know. It's creating a flat roof. Yeah. But if it were less than that, it, now you have a ten percent, and less, then we're also right. reducing the, uh, the or coming up with another configuration of windows that give you, you know, or, or at least provide the same type of okay. uh, excessive light you're looking for. But I'm telling you, what it does now is it's drawing you up to the third floor. It's now a third floor, a, thir a three-story building. Okay. And I think you meant to say if it's a greater pitch. So more of an Less. angle? Yes. I need for it, this to be lower than what you're seeing, I guess, is, is what I'm asking. So you want this pitch to be lower? The, 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 the more pitch, of a pitch. The, the yeah. pitch would be greater. More of a pitch. Yeah. Right. Okay. Where, where it ends up would be lower by definition. Right. Yeah. By and further in. I should say. Well, there you go. Like what I'm, is that what I'm saying like? about the dormer is, so here you see a dormer where the walls, the side walls are set in mm -hmm. from the mm -hmm. side walls below. I can't swear to this. I don't know the building, but it looks to me like this wall on this on this uh, second floor here is back uh, a foot and a half or two feet from the wall on the first floor. It's right. set back. Sometimes you'll see a shed dormer where the roof line uh, comes in below the ridge line, the main ridge line, and all of that makes it to me look like what most shed dormers look like. To define like. it more separate from the... Which the is like more stand. subservient to the... A little more subservient. To the and, facade. And, uh, and, and this one doesn't do that. This one, the roof yeah. line of the shed dormer goes up to the main roof ridge line of the house. And I don't mind that necessarily because there's a sufficient okay. setback. Okay. On the other dimensions. Mm -hmm. Understood. <coughs> um, Zach, anything to add to that? So, so I guess I'm saying I'm not sure it's no, the I angle of that. I think as flat as it is, the okay. is bothering okay. those pairs of triplet windows just essentially it makes it seem top heavy. Top heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Like all the windows are in the attic. Sure. So it's the eye goes up to that. I we can revamp the window. That's not a problem. Oh that's not a problem. Yeah. Any public comments on the application? Open to anything. You step forward? You have to step forward, we can. And if you can give way for him. Oh, just a brief. Uh, I live on Pelletro Street, 120 Pelletro Street, La Porati, Georgia. 110. 110, sorry. Yeah, 120 is the next one. <laughs> <laughs> and I just applaud their effort. We love to see their house in the street every time we walk by. That's all. Thank you. Yeah. So you're supporting the application? We love, we applaud the effort to invest money and time to preserve the house. We're Thanks. happy. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? 
All right, so you heard some of the suggestions. Um, yeah, we've got some work to do. We'll, we'll, we'll come back. We'll come back. We can certainly handle the. the we can, you know, make some changes to the to the dormer windows. We'll be back. Excellent. Okay. Thank so, you. Thank you. May I ask one question? Uh, so step forward. On the July 20th, the next hearing that we're here. You, no, June. 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 Oh, well, the next we're one on we're the on next for... phase is July 9th, oh. so... Because that's when you'll have the survey Yes, done. exactly. So then I can approach that second phase, which was the foyer in the front. Um, so shall we do everything all together at that time? Well, you right. want to wait till the July meeting? So That'd be combine. fine. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. We're good. Sure. Thank you. To keep the stuff to learn or it's all going to get changed. Uh, well, those are, a lot I'll of those are just it. photos of the neighboring properties and things, so... I don't want you to want confuse you anymore, so maybe yeah, I should take so it back. No, yeah, well, yes, exactly. This one is uh, yeah. it's not necessary. All right, so um, uh, the, the, the request is going to adjourn until the July 9th. Yes. Because you already have a slot, is that correct? Yes, do. correct. Okay. The application's in and everything. So, yeah. Well, that's good. All right, so we'll just have two. Uh, so motion to approve applicant's request to adjourn until the July 9th hearing. I make a motion that we um, approve the applicant's request to adjourn to our July 9th meeting. Motion by Christ, uh, Christina. Sir, I second the motion. Second by Susan. All in favor, Rob? Aye. Christina? Aye. Susan? Aye. Jeff? Aye. And no, no. Thank you. Thank you. Next yes. application, please. Yes. The next application is Tallow Building Corp at 120 Pelotros Street, constructing a two story single family dwelling with detached garage. Submitting a file or uh, duplicates of what are in file. So just yes, sir. No changes, alterations. No, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Uh, May you have posting a mail. You have, you have the posting a mail. Oh yes. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, posting and mailing is being submitted now. Good evening, Mayron McDonough and Conway Architects. On behalf of my client, Hallow Builders. Um, We have something to present on front so we can have it as part of it. Yeah. Oh, I think I gave you six copies. One was for me. Well, borrow sax. No, no. Thank you. <coughs> no Flip it around. I can see it. Thank you. Right. Uh, but just as I said before, these are the same exact copies of what's in the file. <clears throat> these renderings uh, should be either in the file or represent the drawings that you have before you. Okay. Um, um, could I just ask on the perspective of the rendering, is this actually accurate, this foreground? It is accurate, correct. Thank you. Uh, the house is basically a new house we're proposing, uh, approximately 3,300 square feet. Uh, three bedrooms on the second floor, one on the first floor. As far as the design, and I know you're, you're not concerned with the bedroom count, skip that. Uh, we decided to stay with something very simple this time. Uh, the size of the house, the program, is something very in keeping with the area and the neighborhood, very vernacular to the village. Uh, we've done many houses here, but as you look at this house, very simple, very modest, and not very over the top, as it was mentioned in one of the meetings. <coughs> uh, typical cedar roof and cedar shingles, uh, siding, cedar siding, I'm sorry. White windows and white trim, and oh, no. pretty much nothing out of ordinary, nothing against the grain that would be uh, a detriment to the area. <laughs> I never made it. I didn't have it. Oh, when you say diamond cut cedar siding, is right. that a shingle? Is that a fishtail shingle, or it's is it cedar that's cut in diamond shapes? Grooved? Yeah. Well, Not they're they're place? cut in a diamond tile? form, like tiles. Yes, cedar tiles. C like same a, material as the siding, but the cut is different, though. Okay, but they're How cut into those pieces on? that are like six ah. inch by six. It's a decorative inch. pattern. Thank you, Zach Gable. Up here, yes. Yeah. In the gable, but I just want to understand. It's the, each one of those diamonds is an individual piece of wood. Correct. That Correct. Probably goes up underneath them like a shingle wood. Right. Right. Correct? Okay. Thank you. The 
bottom of the shingle is cut in a diamond yes. pattern. And then the top goes same, same as the shingle. So that's what I was wondering. They're, they're yeah, is it a shingle? Like shingle. Just shows the yes, it's a, it's a shingle the, with a diamond bottom. I think the cut is different. That's not what he said. I know, and I, and I know that, that that's what he said. That's why I right. mentioned it to you. All right. Cut like this. Yeah, Regular exactly. shingles cut like a diamond, yes. Okay. <laughs> and the roof? See the roof. See the roof, Charlie, yes. Uh, Jeff, can you comment? Uh, it's a cute design. Susan? Simple. I like the house. <laughs> you sound surprised. Yeah, I'm sure he's surprised with me. Um, Christina? No, I, I like the design a lot. Thank you. I Rob just, had two questions. Is the the roofing material on the garage is the same as for the house cedar yes. roofing yes. on the garage? And my only other question was the one thing I find odd and it is quite visible is on the uh, right side elevation, and it's just this large area behind the cellar well, the stairwell, with no windows in it. And I'm just wondering. Why that is, since it's a fairly common corner from visible from the road. But there you're looking at. Yeah, that's the that's the one. The the, the, the lower left corner of that elevation. Right you're here. At. Yeah. What? Okay. I have to refer you to the floor plans, which are attached. And as you see, there is a. Uh, where are we? Okay, that's the staircase that's going up. And there's no way to get a window in there. Okay. I mean, the, I mean the, there is. But, but it would be difficult. out of alignment with the other windows. The particular concern I had there is because of the stairwell, it's also not going to be possible to do substantial plantings right by the house that would hide that siding. So you'll have a big, yeah. that's just my concern, is yeah. that you have a big bare wall. Yeah, you're right. If, if you, would, if you would, could wave a magic wand, you'd perhaps have there. the egress going the, mm -hmm. in the other direction, and, and so you could put a nice... Yeah. Yeah. But we could, we could are, add a window there, but <laughs> usually they, you'll hit you'll okay. hit the, the plane of the uh, staircase. I just it wanted to outside of the alignment with the other windows, it would be in between because of the pla stair platform. It caught my eye, and I, I would just add the comment that you could, as as you work with uh, builders on this or landscape designers, if there's something that could be done from landscaping perspective to mask that some way, I would appreciate it. But I don't have any substantial I mean, you, plans. You, could, the you could put trellis and climbers yeah, there, that's but. but um, that's an open. Is, I, I like it. Is the, uh, egr is the egress from the basement, uh, is it necessary to come out Which forward as opposed to the back? I'm the sorry, but uh, the, the, the egress <coughs> from, the, from the basement, Yes. it comes out to the front of the house. Correct. If it were to come out to the rear of the house, then you'd have plenty of opportunity to do well, planting uh, there. It could happen, but it would change the basement layout that we have that yeah. is not a concern of the board. <coughs> you know, it would completely... <coughs> Going out the other way, you also run into the chimney. chimney. It looks yeah. like. and, okay, I just wanted to state the concern that that's a big bare area. I understand why it is. And it's not enough to make me think mm -hmm. I shouldn't approve this because I like a lot of the rest of this house. It's mm -hmm. nice and Clean simple. design. Um, yeah. Really clean design. Um, I, I, I like the uh, diamond design on this second story. I think it's, uh, from a decorative standpoint, it's an element that I think will make the, make the house even more charming. Um, I'm just sad that the little cottage is getting knocked down. That's all I'm just <laughs> But um, it's, it happens. So... Uh, any public comment on the application? Step four, please. Yes, George of the Right. One ten pellet row this time. Sure. Uh, I like the house. It's very beautiful. Just one comment, referring to Mr. Coburn's uh, comment. <coughs> we are actually on this side, and we have a 20 feet privet, and now I see a metal fence. So I'm sure the privet will stay in place. Right, that fence, I'm not sure about that fence, but it's something that we will discuss with the client and with the owner. I'm not sure if that is the, right. that, depict, that doesn't the depict the right fence. It's feet uh, private there right. at the moment. But I think I, that side will be visible from the road. Maybe not directly. Uh, no, no much because it's a bit of an angle, actually. Okay. So if the privet stays, <coughs> yeah, the street, oh, everyone will be happy. <laughs> I'm going to talk on talk. Beautiful design. Thank you very much. I will speak on behalf of the client. Any additional public? We'll try to keep 
Because it takes a long time to build. A right. I understand. Any additional public comment? Okay. Right. Motion to approve. I make a motion that we approve the application of Tallow Building Corp on Pellet Street. I second Christine. the motion. Thank and it was second by Susan. All in yeah. favor? Uh, Rob? Aye. Christina? Aye. Susan? Aye. Jeff? Aye. I'm an aye as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I have a question for the board. One question. Mm -hmm. Regarding 180 Great Plains Road, there was supposed to be a written decision tonight. It's next week. Next week. Next, next meeting. Week. Yes. Next, uh, next week for the next meeting. Next meeting. Two okay. weeks. Any reason it's not here tonight? I didn't get it done. Okay. <laughs> Have a good work. It's easy to call an ally. That's great. He's had a lot of work to do. Yes. Can you be more explicit about it? He had a, uh, a book to write. <laughs> the next application is Long Island Residential. Uh, Inc. at 85 Pelham Street. This is for constructing a two-story single-family dwelling with attached garage. Mm. Uh-oh. Oh, no. There's somebody here. <clears throat> Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Mm. Mm. Posting and mailing, uh, and you have smaller renderings? Yeah, five for the board. I'm sorry? Five for the board. Five, okay. These are uh, matched. Uh, what, excuse me, sir. These are identical to what's in file right now. There have been no changes or modifications. If you have an extra. Okay, the proposed dwelling. Your name for the record. Oh, Charles Kuhn, architect, PO Box. 641 Northport, New York. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, so we have a proposed dwelling at 85 Pelham Street. Um, the siding is going to be a Maybeck, uh, the bottom half Maybeck uh, white uh, dip shingle, a cedar shingle, five and a half inch exposure. Uh, the gable end, excuse me, will be a board and batten, also white. Uh, roof will be a asphalt, uh, black or charcoal uh, in color, and we do have some standing. So we have some metal roof on the lower roofs. Uh, we have a standing seam, uh, pre-finished roof that's going to be a, a light gray. Uh, windows were shown as a, a black frame window. Garage door also black frame with a frosted glass. Your site plan in the file. Oh, I that's what I'm looking oh. at, too. <laughs> are the garage doors facing the street? Yes, they are. Okay. In a big way. When you surveyed the community, were there a lot of street facing garages? Uh, Tony, you want to answer that one? It, it's quite, it's a mixture. I'm sorry? It's a mixture of side entry and front entry. Front entry facing uh, close to the road or set back? Set back. I mean, I didn't measure it, but Can we have your name for the record, Anthony sir? Porco, P O Y C O. Okay. So most, most of the garage were detached and set back facing the road, not attached? Yeah. The mixture, combination of attached and detached. Uh, and and so you have attached facing car? Uh, we have paper. attached facing road. I All don't garage door. I'm sorry? It looks all garage door, the street facing. I would have some reservations with that, especially since it's, uh, it actually, it's recess <coughs> less than the house. The house is recessed further from the garage, so you're accentuating the garage. I think, I think more of the garages in the community are set back and they're, you know, kind of detracts from the streetscape of the community. It looks a little more urban than most would mm -hmm. prefer. Does the property have the ability to do something? The property doesn't have the ability for a sidecar garage. I'm sorry? The property doesn't have the ability for a sidecar entry because of the width of the light. I, I know the building yeah. constraints, um, but there's still an aesthetic board. So I'm just telling you what aesthetically, I'm sorry? So, yeah. Aesthetically, what my major concern. Um, I think everything else, um, uh, um, Withstanding 
there's some small items that I'm sure all the board members would discuss, but that would be the majority of the major issue I would have. Uh, Rob? Um, I just had two notes for my review of the file. The what you call the left facade, I'm just trying to find it here now. Um, Again, it's a, just a fenestration issue with the lack of windows on the on garage, the I guess, and house. a long stretch on the left side. Um, we can, uh, we can certainly add, we can, we can add a window to both the, the garage, which is the bottom half, and then we have the room above, so we, we can certainly add windows. Well, you know, other people are going to have already begun expressing concerns, uh, which I'm not long enough on this board to, to share yet, but about that projecting out. The fact that it does project out and what you would see driving down the road is a bare wall, to me, is a concern. And that, that I think we can resolve. Okay. And um, that was really, that was my only concern. I plan to actually put two lower windows on that wall mm -hmm. and an upper window, which is not on the... Uh, Jeff, comments? Uh, Curtis, thank you. you. You helped me figure out what was bothering me about this, and it's it's the dominance of, of the garage. And there, there, as Tony was saying, there are a number of different garage variations. There are some houses that I don't even think have a garage, <coughs> and they're just driveways. Uh, but this truly gives the appearance of being dominated by a garage, and therefore, making, as you said, a little bit more urban uh, than I think that is appropriate for that street. I wish I, I could tell you where to go with it, but uh, I can just tell you that it's, it looks like a ton of garage and uh, it overpowers what otherwise is a nice design. Um, Christina? Well, um, well, Helen Street is is the end of Moses Lane. And on Moses Lane, bigger houses are being built and it's being really upgraded. This end of the street is starting to be changed and people are buying these houses. But a front facing garage like this, with no windows, right on the street, to me is not the way that we want to go as we start rebuilding these houses. I just. I think it's a so dangerous you, precedent, okay. and there aren't a lot of front-facing attached garages on that street. Uh, <coughs> yeah. Susan? Honestly, I think this looks, it looks like a garage with an attached house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that, I think, is, is what we're, what anyone would be aiming for. I, I understand Especially your space considerations, but then you're going to have to adjust come up with a way, I, I, I agree. I think the house part is, is quite attractive, yeah, the house part is but great. it's so dominated by the garage. Um, it, sec, yeah. Like the picture behind you, or this picture, yeah. it, it really is. Now, um, also the chimney. Oh, where's that? Will you That's mind the, that? That's the uh, far right. Far right. Yeah. Was the, it's stucco. It's stucco. stucco. This is more of a transitional style. Yeah, yeah I, I understand. Uh, but just from the plans, it looked like it was either sided or... Yeah, it does. No, it, it's stuck. It, it's so stuck. I was a little concerned about, now you're really looking... Uh, <laughs> well, it's just the black moldings around the windows. That's, like the, that's the new... The yeah, that's the black new, windows yeah. everywhere. It's, it's, I have, I, oh, Tony, I he's, he's built by Trey. He's, he's actually done a lot of the style home I, I, in I don't mind. Southampton, not in the village, but in actually, Southampton. And it's been very well received. Yeah. It's a very popular style. Yeah. I, I think no, your, no. my issue, my concern I started with was the garage. I think everything else, I think the windows, I think uh, even the transition from the siding to the vertical platform up on the second floor. I think everything else is fine. It's just that the garage needs to be set back. Well, the, the other thing is, well, other thing. it's related to that. Uh, I, I don't even know if there are any houses there that have two two, two garages. Um, well, you build a point, and not not that it matters in our decision, but I gather you guys are developing this as a spec house. Yes, yeah. right. So it has no bearing at all. But on the other hand, it also gives you the flexibility of redesigning it in a way that's more compatible, as Christina was saying. I built a very similar house on Corrigan Street. Yeah. Uh, well, one car front garage and yeah, well, there was and, no and, issues. And, and maybe, maybe that's the way to go. 
No, it was a front car garage, but it's single door. I I don't know, maybe, maybe, that, maybe that'll be you're suggesting possibly go with one one car uh, one garage door. You guys need to figure out what to do. We can't tell you, but we do seem Where's to have a problem with the elements of the double garage. And from the rendering, it, there, it's not that. It is definitely a predominant. Oh, I, I can't. I can't argue because okay. they'll lose the pool. So, yeah. so go over the garage go. They're losing the pool. You're saying they'll swing in to the back. They the claim pool. they can't get in there, right? Um, I know on the other side of Moses, there's we forced the uh, applicant to put the garage inward, and we had a carport so they come into the house. Uh -huh. um, that was one of you know the. <coughs> Alternatives. Nobody wants to give up the pool. I actually uh, looked at a house on Moses. Yes. Where the garage was even further out than this. Well, it Because it had to be because it was a side entry. It was a side entry. From so. the courtyard, which looked, came out another 12 feet rather than this. But and that was a pool. It was in garage doors looking at you. It was facade. Yeah. It was house. Courtyard. Yes. But Christina brings up a good point is that for the sake of aesthetics, you're not willing to give up the, the pool. We don't necessarily have to vote no. for something that's not aesthetically it's pleasing for the sake sure of you folks have a having pool. a pool. I'm not saying you can't have a pool, but on the other hand, we don't have to approve a house that's not aesthetically a, appealing. I think it's a better uh, better. I would actually really look into that, Moses. I, I wasn't, but you'd have to bring that garage out at least another 12 feet. Well, then you're looking at garage. You're, but you're, you're looking, looking at, at you're really looking at a, a heavy structure in the front. This is re recessed. Okay. This is 13. But what you're not looking at is garage door. And I, I'm, I'm going to say it one more time. It's kind of urban than more than it is traditional Southampton Village. Oh, okay. And yeah, certainly I mean, double garage doors on something of this size black. is pretty... What if, you, it, what if we is, put a single door? Okay. So... If we put a single garage door? I, I, we have to do it. Excuse me? You would have to figure this out. But, you, you know, the... the uh, it's close to, it's the, the gable and the part that is the garage is one third of this house. <coughs> is that right? I'm sorry. One Usually th garages are one third one of the third house. One third of the house. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, no, it's a little wait less than a third, minute. but close to it, sure. Well, I don't think it's one third of the house. Okay. okay. Is there a public comment? Please step forward. Uh, my name is Stephanie Stevens, and I live in the village. And for you to object to this, which is a traditional with a, a garage that's a little forward, but then just around the corner from the house, you have this contemporary monster that does not fit the village of Southampton, and especially that area which at one? all. Which, which house are you referring to? The new construction on Pelham that's... No, it's um, on... Um, the street. West West Prospect. Well, West Prospect. West Prospect. It's yeah. on West Prospect, which is right around the corner from Pelham. Yeah. yeah. Is 231. I find it a little odd because this fits more in the neighborhood than that. Just because the garage is a little more out. It's I'm like sorry. It. I just don't. I don't. I don't get that. Okay. For me, I would prefer to see that than that in the village of Southampton. I don't disagree yeah. with you. I don't disagree with you with regards to the other house. That house is five houses down from this. Yes, that's it's, over by the Range Rover. It looks like a spaceship out of Jupiter. I don't even know how that got passed. I wasn't in, particularly in favor of it. Uh, excuse it was me? Very, I wasn't particularly in favor of it. I thought it was very, well, I'm just, um, um, very contemporary for the I was community. about to actually make I agree. based on that. You know, a lot of these garage doors are being used now. This is not just a typical garage door. It's a transitional garage door, which is a very good-looking garage door. The only thing that would soften it up a little bit is doing a single garage door, mm -hmm. which would still be a two-car garage. That would be a huge difference. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think... Uh, this is somehow we're, we're, sorry, somehow we're, 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 we're not communicating well. Yeah. Some, somehow try to find a so way to soften it. Wait, do they want this back? I'm making a suggestion. With windows. Trying to get some feedback. Well, we no. don't know what a single looks like. Then. It's kind no, of hard. perhaps, again, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll look at it, definitely. I, I understand yeah. your point. And perhaps maybe pushing the second floor back a little, get in a, maybe some metal roof going across. It'll just at least take away that full two-story, you know, in-your-face type of wall and at least, you know, break that, that front elevation up into two, two planes. That would maybe give a little less scale to the garage doors. I don't know. I mean, I can look at it. 
Yeah. Talking about an apron roof above the garage doors. Windows. Uh, with a single door. We do have a portion to the that whole, that whole two-story wall, but which you know, does it have to be too far? Does it have to be too far? Yeah. You know, it's it's a scale house. house. You know, what gives house value? I'm, I'm you know, two-car garage is only as oh. valuable as one. It's same roof that's going over the front door and the right side of the house. That's called an apron roof. That would go. Charles has recommended that goes across. Like you said, it's more than just it's break up that two-story mass. Oh, that would definitely soften, 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 soften that whole house. Soften, soften up a little. This is the prominent part of the house. And there's really no way to get a side entrance to that garage. Well, it's not enough setback. Yeah. Side entrances, no. The, the property just will need a minimum of 40 feet. And, and to do a detached garage so, again, it's a spec house. What I'm hearing is you're choosing to maximize that's, your building envelope, which you're welcome to do, but that that then leaves you not with no option to have a I side put the garage entrance. in the back, detach, I have absolutely no yard. I did that on Halsey Street, mm -hmm. 231 Halsey, and became a problem for a lot of buyers. If you put it in the back, detached, you wouldn't have room for a pool? That roof of a pool better be minimized in the backyard. You just have kids. a lot of driveway in the back, you know, you just more driveway, have your so, cars in the back yard, you know, yard, just... That would be more of an ISO. I'm willing to look at a, you know, I'd love to see what maybe a single door looks like, but my concern is, and I share the concern I'm learning from my fellow board members, but I'm not, I don't know how many attached garages there are in the village anywhere where it's this far prominent of the main house and the garage door faces the road. I'd love to know if there are any, honestly. I built one on Corrigan Street. I don't think there are. A couple of years ago. With the front facing garage. Front facing garage, the single door. More <laughs> prominent to the house than this. Basically, maybe two feet okay. from the back. Well, then I stand corrected, but it's not very common. So we can have, you may say there's a lot of pictures. front facing garages. Most of them are on the rear of properties and or detached. This house is not in, as I common as the traditional. It's becoming more mm -hmm. common. Transitional. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is prominent. I, I don't know, but I'll, yeah, but I'll drive home and take a look. Right. I, I think it looks like a, the largest this. part of the house is the part with the yeah, garage, two garage, garage doors, doors and the window. Up a little. I think that'll tone right. totally well, okay. we need to go back. I, I, I think that there's, that there's an issue where we're not communicating well because I think our perspectives are a little bit different. Whereas you said several times that this is a spec house, excuse me, guys, and that you are doing certain things to maximize your return. I don't quibble about that, but there's, this board has a responsibility to disregard whatever you may or may not make on that property. You're starting with a clean slate. What this board is doing is expressing its concern about the aesthetics for that neighborhood. If that means you have to compromise your design issues, whether that be the inclusion of a pool or exclusion of a pool, whether it be the inclusion of a one-car garage or a two-car garage or a no-car garage, those are business decisions that you have to make in order for you to get approval from this board. But first and foremost, this board is gonna look at the aesthetics of the house and harmony with the community. In total disregard of what anybody can make or not make on the house. And that's where I think we're missing some communication. <clears throat> okay. All right, so um, it, this seems to be, uh, there's some suggestions of the board and that the labor over it over and over again. Um, uh, this is your opportunity to come back and, and present maybe a softer alternative, uh, another design that which you feel that it'll be more favorable of the board to approve. Um, we can't redesign it for you. We can just make suggestions, but at the same time, you have the, uh, the ability to be creative and do what you need to do to okay. put something forward that's approvable. Um, nothing further of the board? Nope. Okay, nothing further for the public? <coughs> All right, uh, you're, you need time to prepare that, so you're asking this board to adjourn so you can prepare yourself, correct? Right? What, what date is the next meeting? Uh, Jill, June. When's the next meeting? June, ni June 8th? June 8th. July? I'm sorry, June uh, 25th. 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 Um, oh, yeah. July 25th. June, June 25th. June. Oh, June two, two weeks. weeks. Can we get on the main, next board? Yes. You're already on the next board. Yes. Motion to approve applicant's request to adjourn until our June 25th. I make a motion that we approve the applicant Long Island residential request to adjourn to our next meeting. That motion is by Christina. Is there a second? Seconded. Second by Rob. All in favor, Rob? Aye. Christina? Aye. Susan? Aye. Jeff? Aye. No, that concludes our non-historic first application historic. Uh,
uh, I ask that this uh, uh, this applicant have requested that the application be removed from the agenda, but just as a part of the uh, uh, process, I, that should be voted on publicly and not just requested uh, openly. So I ask that it be added to the agenda so that we can officially remove it. approve the. I'm, I move that we remove from the agenda. We approve it, we pr we approve the applicant's, applicant's request, request to, to remove uh, Hamptons HDA LLC 116 North Sea Roads application before this board. A motion by uh, Rob, is there a second? Second. Second by Christina. All in favor, Rob, uh, Christina, Aye. Susan, Aye. Jeff, Aye. and I'm in I as well. Next application, it's a letter in file requesting that the application be adjourned. Did they give a specific date? Did they say next meeting or is it open-ended? I don't believe they did, but let me double-click. Sorry. It just goes on and on. John, do you remember what the John request Lewis. was on joints? Um, Whatever your pleasure is. For a month, as our experts are next, working on their report. Next meeting. Okay. No, no, you know what, month. if you want, put it up, put it up for two. Adjourn to uh, the July, July 9 meeting. July 9. Uh, motion to approve applicant's request to adjourn until our July 9th meeting. I make a motion that we approve our applicant request to adjourn to our July 9th meeting. Motion by Christina. Is there a second? I second. Second by Susan. All in favor, Rob? Aye. Christina? Aye. Susan? Aye. Jeff? Aye. And let me know. Aye. Next application, please. Next application is Alfred and Denise Hurley, 198 South Main Street, exterior alterations to an accessory structure. I'm re recusing myself. Oh, let the record reflect that uh, Susan is recusing herself. I'll be in the coffee room. Okay. I can get there. My name is Yulio. I'm the architect for the Hardys. Um, oh, I need one back. I always need a um, Last time, uh, uh, there is a question raised about the uh, the the pool house the side, whether they did the a uh, an addition to it or not. I uh, went to the building department. And uh, I did the foil, um, <laughs> and um, I did the foil of this um, um, the the history of this pool house. And then you can see um, this on um, this on um, this one is um, is October 1997, and you can see there's a little pool house here. And the pool house has this little addition, uh, not little, little bump out, and you can see the toilet and sink in it. So the house um, that was built in 97 already had that bump out. And then you can see it's also in the um, 2000 survey. These are all from the building So we department. have the record reflects that the pool house um, uh, that currently exists on the property is and had uh, is yeah. Because last time Susan did uh, raise the question. Have to go and okay. Leave it so it, it is. It did. I'm sorry. Can I, I just want to say to the record, I w happened to be there when this was being explained also to an, a member of this board by someone in the building department. Okay. And what you're saying is correct. Yeah. So I can confirm that. There was also substantial uh, confusion with respect to the file itself. Yeah. Documents were in wrong manila folders, and it was very difficult for them even. Yeah. It took them a long time yeah. to find the right folders and put it together. And as they say in The Wizard of Oz, it got darker before it got lighter. Yeah. People got more confused before they get more illuminated. So there was a reason. Uh, uh, it was not a moot point, but it was resolved as Ms. Well, they Lewis proposed. Suggested. Yeah, they proposed to big, uh, do a big addition, put, eliminate the pool house, and then put it, put the, the ten by ten to the other side of the swimming pool. And they didn't yeah. do it. So this is the confusion part. This is the, the part that, that says relocate pool house. But they didn't <coughs> do it because they did a small addition. The pool house stayed. <coughs> So what are you proposing? Thank so you. we're proposing we're proposing to like rebuild this thing because it's kind of rotted. And uh, originally the contractor thought it's such a small shed, and in his mind he, he thought he could just do the repair. 
but uh, apparently he, he shouldn't. And uh, therefore, I went there and draw up what's, what, what looks You're like. You're replacing like in kind? Uh, yeah, we're, 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 we're building it, yeah. Are you replacing it like in kind? You're duplicate. What you're doing is you're tearing it down and you're replacing it just like it is? Or is it I don't know if you're going to remove every stud. Probably, uh, yeah, it's like in kind. It's, it's almost like exactly the same. And um, Is this viewable from a public street? No. No. No, so it's a very long, it's a very long uh, um, private road going there. And this is behind their house. It's right, like here. Okay. Uh, wait, we actually, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's not entirely like a can because since they're, uh, since they're yeah, original, they thought they were gonna fix, fix it. But then since they're gonna come in front of the board and do the application stuff, and they decided to do a little trellis. Um, Rob, you had a question? Well, that was just my question. I mean, if you're just replacing Lake and Town, you don't need to come before us or get a building permit. You have the right to repair and replace, and we shouldn't be spending time on this. So, but part, it part sounds- One of that actually is that it's, um, it is located in a place where it's not uh, seen from any uh, right of way, from any public access. Um, therefore, uh, not that it's not important, but um, I think there's a, I know the uh, council will um, I'm sure, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's a jurisdictional concern because it's out of our purview. If it's out of the uh, uh, right of way, out of way, uh, sorry, out of view of the right of way or public uh, venue, so I don't think there's a concern about that. But it's also minimum. It's being redesigned with some some light changes to the current uh, uh, building itself, so I don't have any issues in this, I don't, not labor over it. I, have no I don't issues. either. Can I just ask, can you, without any big explanation, just bullet points, what's changing? Is the height changing? Is there, is the trellis has been added, you mentioned, is there anything We're else? We're gonna to, add the, the no. trellis. Uh, the plate height um, of the house right, um, of the little pool house right now is, it's uh, like, um, like six foot eight, yep. like seven foot, yep. because it was originally built to be a little playhouse for the children. And so they just proposed it to be eight feet so that people can stand there, right? That's all. Um, it's in a historic district, um, therefore it requires written decision by council. Is there any public comment on the application <coughs> before we proceed? Is there anything further from the board, Jeff? No, just uh, I. Um, there's been much ado about nothing apparently on this case, and some of it unnecessarily so by your client's uh, demeanor and uh, uh, taking issue with giving Susan the chance to view the property. And just for your benefit, not for the property owners, because I have no, no, I don't want to deal with that on a personal basis, but just for your edification uh, that we need certain information, and it's reasonable, commercially or otherwise, for us to ask for information and to have access to property if, in fact, that helps us make a decision. So we probably wasted time, and your client probably wasted energy, mm -hmm. and in the end, you have somebody abstaining, which is tantamount to a negative vote, so it didn't help her anyway. So, again, Work with us, not against us. If I could, I would. Okay. Okay. I know you do, okay. Lucy. Okay. Yeah. I make a motion to approve the application. Uh, uh, no, no, no. decision. So oh, I'm sorry. We have to, at, at this point, you do realize okay. and recognize that the application is in the historic district and therefore requires written decision. So we'll motion to close the application. I make a motion to close the application for written decision for uh, the uh, Hurley's at 198 South Main. Motions by uh, Rob, is there a second? Second. Second by Susan. All in favor, Rob? Susan. Right. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Christina. Thanks. Uh, I was trying to say we had to go get uh, uh, Susan. Uh, all in favor, Rob? Aye. Aye. Christina? Aye. Jeff? Aye. And I'm an eye as well. Thank you. So the decision will be like two weeks from now? Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Next application, please. The next application is uh -huh. Jen Split Purchase Trust 56 Gin Lane <coughs> modifications to an existing home. For the applicant, John Bennett, Richard Hayes from uh, Haynes Roberts is with me this evening. I think this, uh, uh, when uh, Tim was here the last <coughs> time, we had a very exhaustive review. Oh, sorry. 
Mr. Tim was here the last time. We had a very exhaustive review of the oh. changes to all the different facades. <laughs> the idea was to put them in prose in a list, uh, which we've done. And then I believe Tim met with uh, Zach at the property at the direction of the board. Uh, one very, very tiny change. We often, we struck as different from what you saw the last time. We even struggled with whether or not to point it out. The, actually, these windows that you can see we've clouded, actually, they're simplified from the last design. Um, I believe you can see they're at, and actually a, a simpler. Tell us where the windows are, please. They're right over the, they're, they flank the entrance uh, on the second story. On the north facade? Uh, on the north facade. I struggled whether or not to, to, make, to bring that to your attention, but it is a minor, minor, minor change, so we've put those in the cloud. But the rest is what you saw last time uh, on all the facades, which would give you anything that I know. If right, the board wanted further explanation of this list of changes that we gave, it was exhausted, but exhaustive, but there were right. a, a <laughs> lot of changes, but they were. Do you have a comment? This is. This list. This was very helpful. And uh, going forward, every come back before us with such modifications of a grand right. home, yeah. um, this would be a lot easier. Yeah, it's categorized. Can I just understand, can you just explain how that's simplified? It I, looks it's like almost the impossible to, side lights to, to have been extended see. downward. Is that no, no, they, no, they, well, no, no. Yeah, that's true, but it, it becomes a much simpler design by removing this. But yes, that's, that's true, the side lights are extended down. <laughs> So it I just makes the flush. We looked at Surliana's, and they typically aligned at yes. the bottom. So, Zach, did you hmm. you just met with them? There's no report. Well, uh, what there is it's was okay. I mean, I'm just asking. No, no, no. I'm going to answer your question. Uh, miscommunication. I uh, yeah, I had a tour uh, on the Monday, the 21st, immediately following the presentation, and. Um, yeah, with Tim. And um, what I asked for was Oops. this. Uh -huh. And so I didn't have the opportunity. I was not informed by the building department that this was received. This is the first time I've seen it. Oh, oh God. So just lack Sorry. of communication. There you I go. didn't feel that it was proper, <clears throat> excuse me, proper of me to communicate with the applicant mm -hmm. I don't see to request that. this. Oh, for the record. I'm just saying. Sure. No, I understand I'm, that. I'm, for the record. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. For the record, what I'm saying. And it, would have, and it would have. Of course. What I'm saying. the need for this. On the record is yeah. I requested this of the architect in conclusion of the tour because the whole purpose, if you look back to the video of the last meeting, it was concluded that this is a very large house mm -hmm. with a lot of windows. Some are sort of original, some are sort of from the 20s or 30s when that episode happens, whatever, whatever. And so there are all these details. And so it's the consensus seemed to be, let's get a catalog. Yes. was the word that was used. Let's get a catalog of all of that so that we can make proper judgments about which things are being changed and why and whether that's appropriate or not. Okay, so bottom line is, I, you have not had the opportunity to review okay. this no, to make not. yours, uh, and, and there was a request it's, of this board. And that's just like a breakdown in communication. I'm, I apologize for that. Um, so uh, it, I it, can work on this. I, it, I do feel it, that the file should be complete and that that report should be drafted, if not for anything else, but that to, we... To have it. I'm sorry? To have it. Before. To have it. To have yeah. it, have it yeah. as part of the formal record. Yeah. So we appreciate appreciate doing the work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we this is exactly what Zach now go out and... Finish, um, and doing Tim did a very good job explaining point by point because there are various reasons for why certain changes are being, whether they be aesthetic or mm -hmm. correcting ills, that, <laughs> et cetera. So the, a number of issues, I think, on the whole. You need anything it, but. Oh, I read right? this and it was it was a <laughs> it was like a recipe. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like a, but literally, it was uh, I think a, a very de very de detailed description of what's being done. I think so it now, if that happens. can be offset with a report from that? Zach, and that will yeah. also, for purposes of creating a written decision, help our uh, our legal counsel prepare that so yeah. we have a yeah. complete complete file. Uh, the board members don't. Uh, 
Do you have any objection to that or anything to no, add? No, no, the, the changes look good. Okay. No. Anything to add to it? I just want to say for the record, I feel as though it clearly is a simplification of some things on the House, and I think the only things that I had minor sort of concerns with are relatively less visible, particularly on the first story from public rights away and because of landscaping. So I'm, I generally applaud this. Subject to Zach telling us that we're missing something entirely that hasn't been identified, but I'm highly supportive of what you seem to be doing. So I'm comfortable even closing it for anything but the, the, the report from Zach. So you need the report. You need to read it open. It, it, helps, it helps prepare okay. his witnesses. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Any? No. Never mind. <laughs> no. Therefore, uh, uh, we're going to close the application of or report from Zach, mm -hmm. um, and our next app, uh, next board meeting will have <coughs> that, and you'll be able to give, make your uh, presentation, right. and that will obviously further the application for approval. Seems okay. that there's a positive and supportive. Okay. Frank, so Frank, it's, Frank, it's a journey Frank, until so it's a journey. Actually, <coughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, no. okay. Okay. I'll make a motion to adjourn the application of Dan Split Trust for 56 Gin Lane uh, for the next meeting when we'll have a report from Zach. Second. Uh, that was motioned by Rob. It was second by Christina. All in favor, Rob? Aye. Christina? Aye. Susan? Aye. Jeff? Aye. And I'm not. Okay. So yeah. just, uh, just in closing, I think, I'm just trying to understand what was the hesitance, and I'm not being critical of it, but what was the hesitance? You had met, but you were waiting for a report, but you felt uncomfortable communicating with the architect. That was it? No, the way I left it with Tim was that he would prepare. Okay. Can we iron that out later? Because we have sure. one more Well, no, I think it's something that the board should be aware of. <laughs> sounds, sounds like maybe the architect failed to deliver the, what he said he would Basically, deliver. Yeah. Oh, that's communication. Yeah. I no, it was, it was sent to the building department because of but they, but he to Mr. Bennett and asked him to send it on to Mr. Student Grove, and it seems that didn't happen. No, that that's didn't. not true, Richard. It was sent to the building department, <laughs> and as a result okay. of some quality okay. role, as for, in my opinion, it couldn't be sent directly to Mr. Student office. No, it's just that I wasn't aware that it had gotten to the building. Okay. That's well, really the fault. bus. We're on the same team. <laughs> <laughs> Last application of the evening. Last and most patient uh, one of all. Uh, yes. Last is there application oh, is, there is for BLC. Uh, Hillside, Hillside Investments, Investments LLC at 50, <laughs> at, uh, excuse me, 132 South Main Street. What you're submitting right now is the, the, the affidavit is the posting and mailing? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Have you got the throwaway pile over there? Thank you. And how about this? Okay. That's the playhouse. Thank you. Good evening. Thanks, Thank John. You. Watch out for the bus. Uh, <laughs> you didn't hear it. You didn't hear it. So under the bus? There it is. Tell them. Um, I only have four little half size. Oh, Bill, sure. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Give one to Zach, and then we can. Bill, sure. We, we can share up here. Okay. Your name for the record, please. Uh, Aaron Cypress. Okay. Look, um, you don't have to speak in the microphone. Oh, okay. <laughs> Try to enunciate. Um, I'm the project architect for McAlpin, and I'm representing our client for 132 South Main Street. Okay. Um, and I think what I'll do. I, I had uh, grayed out the existing portion of the house on the plans, and it printed very lightly. So if you need me to walk you through what is existing and what's new, I can do that. Yeah, that would be helpful, helpful. because that, yeah. that was the note I had. I couldn't just So it. why don't we look at the plans first, and then I'll show you the elevations. Um, but we're, we're only concerned with the outside room. Oh, OK. Yeah. Well, you. then let's just look at the elevations. Yep. Good. Right. Um, <laughs> So starting on the north side of the property, which is the driveway side of the house, um, we are coming off the back of the house with a rear addition. So no changes are being made to the front facade. It's just an extension off the back of the house. Um, so really the elevations that are changing are the north side, which is the driveway side, um, where we're coming in with a little box bay window for, or rather, a large box bay. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, sorry. Uh, large the box bay window I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. A uh, large box bay window for a new stair that we're doing, and then just a little covered stair to the mudroom entry, which will be sort of the family everyday entry. I, I didn't understand the little window underneath. Oh, oh, um, um, there is. Exists. Yes, and there's a basement. Mm -hmm. So we're just trying to bring a little more light into the basement. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Just so that's the there. purpose of that little window. That's not the existing. That's, that's, that's not the, no, it looks like it's just moved down, maybe the existing. So, what's so you're say? putting a so staircase down there, a new staircase. That's and that's right. at the half. And this is that's the right. Area. Yep. Hmm. Um, and that stair is open to all levels. And okay. so we're just trying to bring in as much light as we can. Because uh, otherwise, the basement is very much a basement. Um, yeah. And then the house has a porch currently that wraps the uh, south side and the north part of the house and also the rear of the house. So we're just extending that porch and giving it a more gracious stair to the rear of the property. So then that's what you're seeing. And let's, 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 what, go through uh, this. let's go through this. Let's go through this one more time. Yeah. It's not the north and the south side simultaneously. The rear is the east. Yes. Can you rephrase what you just said in terms of the quadrants? Yeah, that would be helpful. Thank you. Um, so on this north elevation that you're looking at, you're seeing the new porch addition um, inside elevation. Well, this says south elevation. I'm so oh, I'm sorry. I'm on the north elevation. OK, all right. Good. Which is the driveway side of the house. Um, and then the, the east elevation, you can probably better see the porch addition, which is very similar to what's there now, but it will not be covered. Well, it is. is that the rear of the house? Um, yes, yes this that's is the, rear. the rear of the house. So the house remains relatively narrow, it's mm -hmm. just extended way back. That's right. Gotcha. Um, and then if everyone wants to take a look at the south elevation, um, this is what I consider the more prominent side yard of the house because there's a lot more landscape over there and there's a pool on that side of the house. Um, and so again, we just continued that existing porch up to a certain point. And then this <coughs> addition that we're doing does not have a porch over it because we're just trying to bring in as much light as we can to that kitchen. Covered porch. So this is being edged. That's the side, so that's the... The opposite side. Totally side. So it's it looks like the covered it. porch stays basically exactly where it is. Mm -hmm. and then that's and then right. You're, then you continue an uncovered porch on the addition that's to wrap correct. around the kitchen and eating area, whatever's inside through the French doors. Yes. Yeah. Remove the third, third story uh, dormer there and yeah, uh, reduced it and added two dormers to show the length, length of the roof line. Oh, this is mm -hmm. easy. Because mm -hmm. easily, most people would have just duplicated that okay. mm -hmm. dormer and it had this heavy uh, third story dormer. Um, and then lastly, the west elevation, which is the very front of the house, um, is not different. <laughs> That's good. So it's the same, but I think still probably good to see. I don't know if this is a design thing, or, or but the shutters don't look functioning. Um, if you sh close the shutters, so are they all decorative? Well, we were just matching existing. This is what's there now. Um, I don't know if they're operable or not. Okay. It's been there for a long time. Yeah. yeah. The house was built in the late 1800s, <coughs> and then um, the previous homeowner prior to our client did an addition and an update in the 80s, I think. So these shutters might have been done in, in 88. I'm not sure. So was that in the... Sorry? Oh. Exactly. The details are being done. Uh, I think it requires a report. Uh, well, I just have a couple of questions uh, because uh, elevations can be deceptive mm -hmm. uh, inadvertently. Uh, are any of those window sashes being changed? None of the existing ones. So, because that's a design thing, it's also an archaeological point. Because mm -hmm. a design can look identical and it can be new. Yeah. Okay. So my question is, mm -hmm. is any of the architectural detailing, for example, on the front facade, mm -hmm. the doors, the window sashes, the railings, et cetera, the porch posts, are those all remaining? They will remain. And they'll be repaired as required. Yes. But mm -hmm. we're not swapping out sashes for all yeah. that. Okay. Yeah. So that would be that would be a reason for me to want to go to the site to sort of verify 
if something is being taken away that shouldn't be. Should go uh, anyway. But if you're, he should. Uh, I'm always happy to do a site visit. This is not a, <laughs> not a problem for me. But I would if uh, I could verify the uh, age of certain of the components that you're looking to preserve and maybe further your resolve for for doing that. Um, the only design concern that I have is it, it, it is a very substantial extension to the back. Yes. I think it's scaled in a way that's very respectful to the massing of the original house, so it succeeds in that, you know, in that guideline. Um, it's quite visible mm -hmm. because it's a relatively large piece of property, and of course you can see both of those side facades which are now being built, so they're not in the back. I mean, they're right. quite visible. But I think aesthetically they're handled very well from what I'm seeing here. But uh, I could enumerate my reasons for feeling that it meets the guidelines or doesn't, as the case may be, in a, in a written report, okay. which would require a site. Uh, Council, are you asking to do so because it's easier for a written decision? Or? Yes, absolutely. Document the file. Okay. okay. Uh, so we'll just briefly follow, okay. follow, follow the advice of Council. Briefly, I, I'm not sure, Zach. I, I, when I went to the site, a lot uh -huh. of this side, particularly the north north facade, is actually not very visible. Okay. There's substantial landscaping on that and the church property next door. It's very hard to see. And the yep. reason okay. I checked that specifically is because my one concern is the box bay window and the new gabled form uh, uh, to the east of that, mm -hmm. plus the addition of the French doors, it started looking a little busy um, in elevation. But elevations mm -hmm. are deceptive. And I think on site, I was relatively convinced that it's far enough back from the road okay. with substantial enough landscaping that it allayed a lot of my concerns. It's not okay. the choices I would make, but I don't think it's going to have the visual okay. impact uh, that I feared it might. Yeah. It's a very front-facing house. It's it very front-facing house. Yes. Mm -hmm. I like that house. I love yes. that house, too. Yeah. House. Well, I love every portion. That section of town is I do. probably the yeah, most... Yeah, it's a really uh, pretty lot. Aesthetically um, beautiful. Um, okay. Right. Um, so we're going to get... Zach will... Uh, Get I'll in touch and notify yes. uh, students okay. to yep. uh, do a site visit yes, and indeed. come back at the next meeting with a report mm -hmm. uh, simulating if the things are redone yet, yeah, the appropriateness yep. of the changes that are being made, and um, we'll have that at our next mm. meeting. Okay. Questions? Do I need to be at the next meeting? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that will be. you'll be presenting. 25th. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. That sounds great. Thank if you. If for some reason you can't make it, contact them and they'll adjourn it. Well, the only the reason I, I ask is um, I live in Nashville. Oh. <laughs> oh. So I just wanted to plan accordingly. Can okay. okay. the owners is represent someone, themselves? They, from? Um, I think they would probably prefer we do it. I'm, I'm happy to come back because I need to probably meet with the contractor anyways and go over a couple things mm. so I can make it a productive visit. Um, but I just wanted to book my travel and... Well, what, what we're getting into matters that are... Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> but, so wait, we're I into traveling. How do I get to the top of the agenda? <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, I just need to... Um, well, you're in the historic, which puts you at the, at the end. enviable oh, end okay. of this meeting. <laughs> okay. right. So it doesn't so. seem to be an uh, overall no object objection to the board. As yeah. Winston Churchill said, you will be the beginning of the end. Yes. Oh, anyway. I will eat dinner before the next one. Yes. Yes. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 I did not As such, know what I was uh, motion, to, <laughs> motion to adjourn the application until our next meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Make a motion to adjourn the application <laughs> for 133 okay. Mount okay. South Main Street until Correct. Our next meeting. Uh, you uh, motion motion was by, motion by Rob, second oh, by Christina. Okay. All in favor, Rob. Uh, Aye. Christ no, Christina. Aye. Jeff. Aye. And I'm as well. Um, I don't believe we talked about the minutes, which was my fault. Yeah. I apologize. The minutes from May 14th. Um, all, all board members were present. Any issues, questions, comments, concerns? And I know there were some changes and yeah. some requests to modifications. All board members agreed to it? Uh -huh. All right, uh -huh. no. So therefore, motion to approve the minutes from May 14th. I make a motion we approve the minutes from May 14th, 2018. Motion by Christina. I second, second the motion. Second by Susan all in favor. Aye. 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 And motion to close this evening's meeting of June 11th, thank you, 2018. I make a motion that we close this meeting on <laughs> June 11th <laughs> of the Board of Architecture right. Review and Historic Preservation. Motion by Christina. Oh, second. Oh, I'll second it. The last name. Second it all in favor. Aye. 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 Have a good night. I, you know, I'm